Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Please click the like button and subscribe if you want to. I appreciate it. And uh, I always say thank you to the subscribers I already have. Um, they are just awesome. Well, the GOP projected to take Senate with key wins in Pennsylvania and Nevada. Recent polling trends indicate Republicans stand a significant chance of retaking control of the Senate in addition to the House after next month's crucial midterm elections. The GOP must have a net gain of at least one seat in the Senate to break the current 50 to 50 tie that goes in favor of Democrats thanks to the tie-breaking vote of Vice President Kamala Harris. Real Clear Politics, RCP, currently rates 47 seats on the Republican side of the ledger. Those are either GOP seats, not up for election this year, or are considered safe, learning, leaning, or likely to go Republican. Democrats have 46 seats in those categories. That leaves seven seats rated as toss-ups, of which Republicans must take four in order to gain control. Perhaps the most high profile of the toss-up con contest is in Pennsylvania, where Republican Dr. Oz is squaring off with Democrat John Fetterman. RCP updated its projection there on Thursday, now showing Oz is expected to win by a 1.9% margin. RCP's a projection takes into account the undercounting of Republican support in recent polls by the monitored firms with a Pennsylvania adjustment amounting to 5.2 percent points. Fetterman's health is an ongoing issue in Pennsylvania that is likely contributing to a recent surge by Oz in major polls. Fetterman suffered a major stroke early this year that is having continuing effects on his speech and ability to process words he hears. The Fetterman campaign released a letter on Wednesday written by Dr. Clifford Chen, C-H-E-N, that says the candidate has no work restrictions and is able to work fully duty in public office. It was reported the same day that Dr. Chen is a campaign donor to the Fetterman camp. In addition to raising concerns about Fetterman's health, Oz has also blasted him on his soft on-crime policy positions. Fetterman has voted as a member of the State Pardon Board to release a convict sentenced to life in prison for murdering a victim with garden shears. Ooh, Lord have mercy. My oh my. Nevada is another of the toss-up states. Uh, GOP challenger Adam Laxalt has surged ahead of incumbent, incumbent Senator Catherine Cortez Masto, uh, Democrat of Nevada, in what would be a critical pickup seat for the Republicans. The new CBS News poll published Thursday shows Laxalt holds a one percentage point lead over Masto, uh, despite being outspent by around nine million. Laxalt has led in seven of eight recent polls by an overall average of nearly two percentage points. Laxalt's lead is most attributed to the disfat dissatisfaction Nevada uh, voters have with the Biden administration and Democratic Congress as the state is hammered by soaring inflation and depressed tourism industry. Voters there also rank crime, legal immigration, election integrity as their most important issues in considering who to vote for this year. With Pennsylvania and Nevada project as GOP wins, RCP now projects that Republicans will hold 52 seats in the Senate when the next Congress is seated in January. Well, we need something good to happen. That is for sure. Yeah, that is for sure. I feel uh, bad about Fetterman, and I had a video on him. Um because of his stroke, you know, and he has fought so hard to get back on his feet. But uh, he is soft on crime if he's thinking about 
letting that murderer out of prison. You know, once they commit something like that, nine times out of ten, they're going to go right back to it. And how would Fetterman feel then if that was to happen? It's, um, I don't know. I really don't know. Oh, uh, let's see. That one is done. Well, let's go to this one. Uh, this is really sad. Uh, and it's in Germany, supermarkets. Inflation. It's empty shelves in German supermarkets. And they've got a big picture here. I mean, there's very few cans on the shelves. Most shelves are empty. Oh, that picture just gives me an image of what we might be headed for. And it's not pretty. No, it's not a, a pretty sight. Germany's retail marketplace could be foreshadowing worsening conditions for Americans. I just said that. Supermarkets there are suffering from increasingly empty shelves. Skyrocketing inflation is making the production and sale of a wide variety of common food products unprofitable. Everything from cornflakes to soft drinks are disappearing from retail inventories across all of Germany. Overall price inflation soared above 10% there in September on an annual basis. The annual rate across all member states of the European Union hit nearly 11% last month. The continuing energy crisis hammering Europe is being blamed for most of the increases in prices for food and other essential items. Major food producers like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and Mars are placing increasing pressure on German retailers to pay higher wholesale prices for processed and packaged foods in response to their own soaring production costs. And you know what that means. We're not going to be able to afford it. People in Germany can't afford it. Major Germany supermarket chains have resisted paying higher wholesale prices with giant food seller Etika accusing major producers of price gouging and usury. U-S-U-R-Y. Usury? Spokes, uh, a spokesperson for Etika, E-D-A-K-A, Etika, told local reporters that Mars... Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble, and others are currently trying to ride the wave of inflation with excessive price demands in order to increase their returns. The source added that several major producers have cut off deliveries to Etika as a perceived way of putting pressure on the stores to pay more for products. The official said producers are using unlateral delivery stops as a means of exerting pressure on retailers. Several other major retail chains have reported product deliveries have been cut off as they have resisted increased wholesale prices. Germany's Federal Association of Food Industry General Manager Christoph Minhoff described the supply situation as critical to catastrophic. He noted that some retailers have even taken suppliers to court in recent weeks over unresolved pricing, pricing issues. Many well-known brand name products are now impossible to find in many supermarkets. While some consumer products have substitute goods available, some lines like pet foods and disappear and like pet foods are disappearing altogether. Oh my goodness. Food scar scarcity S C A R C I T Y Scarcity, food scarcity, scarcity, well, I'm sorry for pronouncing bad words, well, not bad words, but words I can't pronounce, but it's scare city, two words, scare city. Food scarcity concerns are rising in Germany as the availability of winter heating is also causing an alarm throughout the nation. Many homes are already projected to be without adequate energy resources to provide adequate heat. You know, like I said, I, I didn't know there'd be any happy news in these uh, articles tonight. Or I should say early this morning. It's 3.00, 3 a.m. my time now. Several nutritional institutions are pressing for energy rationing as cold weather approaches. 
It appears that most locations are going to rely on voluntary cutbacks, however. But it remains to be seen how the population will fare as a result when seriously cold winter weather, weather arrives. Yeah, because, you know, this is Germany, but we could be facing 40 degree below zero weather. And that's not wind chill. I have repeated this several times in my videos. 40 degrees below zero, not wind chill. So that would put wind chill at what? About 60 below? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, people, people, I just don't know. I really don't know. Mm. I can't fathom it, but we could be looking at it. Well, CDC faces backlash after adding COVID jab to school vaccination list. And this is for younger children. And I did an article on this last night, and I think a time before. But with mounting questions surrounding the efficiency and safety of available COVID-19 vaccines among children and young adults, a number of prominent critics have pushed back against the recent Centers for Disease Control, Disease Control and Prevention decision to add the shots to its Vaccine for Children program. One such opponent is former Fox News Channel host Megan Kelly, who claimed there has been a troubling trend of unexplained illnesses and death among vaccinated youth. So it's not just the adults with getting those shots. It's the children, too, that have passed on. I was going to look up, I wanted to get the um, number, you know, of the deaths of the younger children from getting those shots. Um, I just can't fathom people. Doctors that took an oath to make people well. But they get that money going. You know, money talks. BS walks. Remember that? All they can think about now is getting rich off of this vaccine and playing it out like there's no end to it. You know? But when they, the people get the vaccines, they're supposed to be saved. Look how many has passed away. And I have no idea on the number of children that passed away. Oh my goodness. In a public statement last week, she noted that she was an early proponent of COVID-19 vaccines, noting that she's originally believed it was a miracle. Well, haven't you? If you got the shot, you got the booster, you just thought, oh, I'm going to be saved, I'm going to live. Well, thank God you did. But what about those that didn't? And they got the same shot you did. Whether it's Pfizer or Moderna. You know? It's a money maker, people. Oh my goodness. That protected people from a potentially deadly virus. Now they've got a word going out now in the news, and I'm sure you've all heard it or read it on uh, YouTube and everything that there's another variant now that's loose <clears throat> the COVID over overreach really upset me Kelly added the longer it went down the thing that made me the maddest I've been probably in the last two years was the shaming of parents who wanted the mask off kids as for the argument in favor of vaccinating kids she said that it remains tendous tedious at best it's scary. It is tedious. What should a parent do? They want to save their children. They love their children. And they want to keep them safe. Should I give them, let them get the shot or should I not let them get the shot? What if I lose them if they get the shot? What if they've already had a shot? Do they need another one? Well, they're supposed to have taken care of it with the first shot. But then here come another one. Here come another one. Here come a booster. Now another one. Another one booster. And going on, 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 on. I mean, they're trying to shoot us all up. It's almost getting to them. Their money is a drug. Like they want us to be addicted to these shots. Get it? <clears throat> I didn't get one. 
No, I didn't, and I'm fine. Not saying I will be fine, but I don't leave my house without a mask on, and I don't stay out long. Like I said in another video, if I go to the, to the doctor's, I go in the doctor's office with my mask on, never take it off. I go to the lab, get my blood work done with my mask on, never take it off. Get back in the ride that took me there in the first place. Leave my mask on, I never remove it until I get home. Then I take it off. If I go to the grocery store, the dollar store, which is my grocery store mostly. I leave it on, I never take it off. The vaccines and the information about the damage that the vaccines are doing versus their efficiency is dark, she complained. Yes, it is. It can be damn deadly. Why is it being buried? That's her question. Well, I back it up. Why is it being buried? And like I said, I think last night in a video, how do we know what's in those damn shots? Is it the old flu watered down that they're pumping us full of? That might help us a little bit, but we're still going to croak? Oh, come on, people. Take care of your own selves. Your body tells you what you need. Go with your body. Let your body talk to you and tell you what it needs. If you come down with the sniffles, you got a little bit of a cold, go to the, somewhere with a mask on, get some Alka-Seltzer Plus. That's what I do. And in two days, I'm back on my feet feeling wonderful. Great. I don't need no damn shot. Ugh. Now, if you come down with a really bad chest cold, you've got pains in your chest, when you cough, try some cough medicine first from the store. Try that first. Stay warm. Stay inside. Don't go out. And take care of yourself. Take a couple aspirins, but watch these, what do I want to call dry medications, which is pills and liquids off of the shelf of the store. Always read the back. Read the label. Be sure you know what's in that. And then doctor yourself. Be sure you eat a lot of garlic and a lot of onions, even if it kind of disrupts your tummy, you know. Because garlic and onions is a preventative of almost anything, you know, and eat some, a lot of hot soups. Don't go in for fast food food. Don't go in for that, you know, make your own stuff at home by hand with your two hands and doctor it up. And I love hot Louisiana. If you've got a cold, a chest cold. Get some hot Louisiana hot sauce. And don't make it so you can't eat it. But do it just so it tingles your tongue. Because once that heat gets inside your system, it's going to loosen up that mucus in your chest. And you'll be coughing it up and take your cough syrup. Make sure it's a good cough syrup. And uh, them are just helpful hints. I got to hush up here and keep on with my article. <laughs> we'll be here all night. <laughs> but I do my home remedies. And get on the internet. There's all kinds of home remedies to help you. Yes. <clears throat> okay, people. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. You can't trust the American Health Services. Now, this is still this lady talking. Kelly. They have only one mission, which is to push their vaccines on us. Follow me here, people. Come on now. I'm trying to save your life. Fox News personally, Tucker Carlson also weighs in on the CDC's recent recommendation and attacked it, backlash directly from the federal agency. In a tweet conferencing, Carlson recent on-air segment, the CDC sought the split hairs in discrediting, discrediting his larger point. Thursday, CDC's Independent Advisory Committee, ACIP, will vote on an updated childhood immunization schedule. The agency wrote, 
state established vaccine requirements for school children, not ACIP or CDC. Now let me read that again now. I got to get my mind back on my article here. Thursday, CDC's Independent Advis Advisory Committee, the ACIP, will vote on an updated childhood immunization schedule. Now are they going to make this law? The agency wrote, states establish vaccine requirements for school children. They're going to make it a state law. Not ACIP or CDC. Now if they make that a state law, your child can't go to school unless you get him shot. Well, there's homeschooling. And I'm sure that some of the teachers, I would think that you could probably pay to come to your home if you're not able or adequate enough to teach your children. But you know, I'll explain just a minute when I get done here. Carlson pushed back in a subsequent segment of his show asserting, the point is the CDC sets the standards. Then it becomes required across the country, and of course, they know that. Like so much else, they have told us over the last two years, they're lying and they know they're lying. Although states might technically provide final approval for vaccine requirements, Carlson noted that more than a dozen states follow the CDC's immunization schedule to set vaccination requirements for children to be educated. You can educate your child at home. Maybe not so much history, but everything that you need is right here on the internet. You pay monthly for it, very cheaply. Then it would cost you to send your child to school and get a shot and maybe not live. You can get your math here, lessons on the internet, history, English, penmanship, anything that you need to teach your child if you're not quite ad adequate, you know. Everything is right here on the internet. And what is wrong, you know, when it comes to math, and I will tell you, I failed fourth grade because in the fourth grade came the uh, division of more than two to three numbers. They put six numbers in a division divided by four numbers. Now figure that one out. Yeah, figure that one out. Well, I'm not math equipped. I'm not adequate in math. No. English, I did pretty good. History, at that time, I was not interested in it. But boy, am I now. And I can, I can go to any channel that I want here on the web and get my lesson in history all that I need to know. But what's wrong with just good old subtraction, addition, multiplication, and some division? Teach your child those four things in math. That's all they're going to need unless they're going to go to college, if you can afford it, and they're going to become a lab technician. Now, if the child wants to go with a lab technician and he's got the brains to do it, which a lot of children do, you know, they've been born smarter over the years than we ever was. Isn't that something? Have you thought about that? Yeah, look how the kids these days pick up. I mean, you got two, three-year-olds know how to run a computer. I mean, my goodness. I can fix a computer better than I can run one, as you all know. <laughs> and that's the truth. Because it's easy to fix a computer. All you need is a part. That's all you need. And you can fix a computer. i got to put a um, heat sink in my gateway. I have an all-in-one gateway. And um, it overheated. And the only thing that I worry about is if the wire might have got singed then that means I have to go and try to uh, find the wire and the size of the wire and thickness of the wire and da 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 you know what I'm trying to say here. And uh, I would have to take it probably to a computer store and uh, say, here, I need some new wiring here for my heat sink. 
but I can fix it. But to run one, I'm lost. Yeah, if I don't have somebody help me step by step to run a computer on some of these things, I, I have to do it myself and I do the best I can. And that's what I'm doing, people, <laughs> the best I can. But, um, I mean, you see a, a two-year-old or a three-year-old get on a computer and if the parents don't put that parent guide on, uh-huh, you get the picture and maybe your child has already had that. Yeah, be sure you get that parental guide where you can just kind of keep the child in a cubic thing for children is what I'm trying to say, okay, to protect them because there's a lot of stuff on this internet, a lot of people that, you know, protect your child. Okay, people. I'm going to close this out. God love you. I'll be back. And you are a blessing.